example, the president says it's the greatest economy of all time, but it's really kind of an average economy right now. If you look at where we've been over the past uh, uh, post-global financial crisis, Great Recession period, we're about, on average, where we've been. So uh, I don't know, why should the Fed, uh, for most of that time period, uh, the, Fed, the Fed has been uh, in a no do-nothing mode, then they tightened rates about nine times, and now they're cutting them a little bit. Uh, I don't exactly see what the what the real uh, urgency is for cutting well, interest what, rates. What you, to, what, what you say, I mean, the, leave the left alone. What you laid out, uh, more QE, more cuts. Uh, this could be music to the person's ears that you just mentioned, the president. Uh, that's what he wants. He wants more QE. He wants uh, rates to be cut. He would be fine with negative interest rates. What do you make of the whole you know dynamic that we've seen over the last several months? Well, it's, a, it's obvious that uh, President Trump wants the dollar to be lower, and the way to get there is to cut interest rates very dramatically so that you eliminate the interest rate differential that exists between the United States and the negative yielding areas of Japan and Europe. Uh, he, he wants that to happen. He's, he's, the, the president seems to want as much debt as possible and as much borrowing as possible, and he wants a zero interest base, negative interest base, to facilitate an open-ended debt binge, and obviously the Democratic Party is running on immense spending programs. So I suppose that they, though they don't talk about the Fed the way the president does, I suppose they would want uh, lower, uh, lower interest rates too. So we're in this place of uh, e extreme bond supply coming at us in the next recession. And I think that's a fundamental uh, starting point to think about uh, portfolio allocations looking forward multiple years okay. is that when the next recession comes, it's going to be a real issue as to how we deal with the amount of bonds that are going to uh, be flooding the market. We saw this week, again, with the repo uh, um, emergency that the Fed had to enact yesterday, that was brought on because we had a mismatch in terms of maturities of bonds and cash payments for income tax and the like, and a small amount of maturing bonds and, and issuances that was about $54 billion. It was $54 billion that caused this kind of a hiccup in the short-term interest rate funding market. Just imagine what would happen if we had $3 trillion of long-term bonds floated in the, uh, in, in the wake of a recession that's coming. And I think that's really important. Right. So I think but as the deficit explodes, we should expect the dollar to be falling. We should expect the dollar to fall in the next recession. I think that is fundamental in the way we think about how we allocate assets with um, my favorite chart of the year, uh, and I used it in my webcast yesterday, which will be up on replay at doubleline.com pretty shortly, is I went back and I looked at the four major regions of the global stock market going back to the 1980s. And what happened is that the J Japanese market was the world beater in the late 80s. Uh, it was perceived to be invincible. The Japanese, the Nikkei outperformed every market uh, every other region, the Eurozone, the United States, and the emerging markets by a huge amount in the late 80s. And then the, the recession came in the early 90s and it completely kneecapped the Nikkei. And interestingly, the Nikkei has never made it back to that level ever again, mm -hmm. in spite of the fact, you know, it's 30 years later. Then, uh, with the advent of the Euro, there was a lot of, I think, misplaced optimism about the, the Eurozone's possibilities, and Europe massively outperformed the rest of the world going into the OO period, uh, the dot-com bust. Right. And then the European market completely collapsed after that, and it's never made it back all this time, 20 years, it's never made it back to where it was uh, in, in the advent of the euro. And then the emerging markets were absolute world beaters from uh, into the global recession, the great financial crisis. They crushed every other market in the world, and interestingly, in that recession, the Great Recession, emerging markets got decimated, and they've never made it back right. Jeffrey, to the peak that they were at. I, I yep. literally have less than 30 seconds left. This time goes way too fast. Uh, rapid... Let me finish my point. Let me finish my point. Go so ahead. going into this, this coming recession, whenever it comes, the United States has clearly been the world beater and has massively outperformed everybody else. I think in the next recession, we'll see the same pattern repeat where the U.S. gets kneecapped and ends up underperforming the rest of the world with the dollar weakening. And I think for that reason, as you look forward six or eight, months, six or eight years, long-term planning here, you should be allocating incrementally, gradualistically to non-dollar uh, investments and non-U.S. stock market. Uh, we'll leave it with that thought, although I wanted to ask you whether you think Jay Powell's going to finish his term. He will.
His job is safe, according to Jeff, Jeffrey Gunlock. Jeff, we appreciate it as Please always. Be safe. All right. It's okay, always good to nice spend time you. with you. That's Jeffrey Gunlock from Double Line.